really like to say thank you to, I don't know who was at the party last night, but I want to thank Magnolia Wellness for putting yeah. on the yeah. sickest party last night. Well, there's also something about Magnolia Wellness. They are the main sponsor of the ICBC, so and they are uh, one of the finest dispensaries, no doubt. You can see them in your program. Uh, you know, you want to support places like Magnolia because they support us, and we're not the normal business conference. We are. We have an a, a undercurrent of activism that that uh, run, runs through the entire uh, uh, course of, of this program. And uh, we really appreciate Magnolia Wellness for their support, not only for us, but for the community in general. So, uh, if any of y'all are local or still have your cards and when you're coming into California, uh, check out uh, Magnolia Wellness because they're, they're great and they've been a huge help uh, to, to, to organize this, uh, helping organize this conference. So I, my hat really goes off to them. I also want to thank a couple other people um, my, my, my tight crew, uh, there's a couple people that if, if, uh, if I didn't have them on my team, there'd be no team, there'd be no ICBC. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's not just me, it's, uh, it is a team, and uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you get a good team together, you know, it, it doesn't always happen right away. Um, you have ups and downs, you know, but uh, if you can get through some things, you know not only that you're a good team, those are your good friends also. So there's two people that uh, that I need to mention uh, that are very important, uh, that were very important in organizing this event and, 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 and the rest of the ICBC events to come. Uh, we have the Oregon Medical Marijuana Business Conference. Uh, it's just an Oregon conference in Eugene next month. It's going to be bananas. And then we have another ICBC in Portland. Uh, September 12th and 13th at the Oregon Convention Center. When we'll, we'll email you all and get that online sometime in April. And then we're going to do it right here again, February 14th and 15th next year. So uh, just so everybody knows uh, uh, what's up. But but uh, the reason we can do all this is uh, uh, I just want to thank our speaker coordinator. She is, she gives us all the ideas for the speakers and she helps us go get them. Uh, let's give it up. For the one and only Debbie Goldsberg. She's not coming up. She's coming up. Debbie, where are you? Woo! She's back there. Stand back there. Debbie. Love you. And you're going to be seeing some of Debbie's magic later on today. She presents a couple times, and uh, uh, you know she's about it, as we say. Uh, not only her business acumen, but she's probably. <laughs> Uh, one of the top activists, not just female activists, one of the, the top activists in the entire country, uh, and that's a, that's a, uh, that's pretty much inarguable. So uh, the other guy I'd like to thank is uh, uh, my boy who lives in Oregon, He's my homie, uh, tireless worker, unbelievable heart, best guy in the whole world, uh, chief petitioner of Measure 91, a big part of this conference. You saw a lot of him yesterday. You're gonna see some more of him today. Uh, the more the merrier for this guy. Let's give it up for Anthony Johnson. Yeah, Anthony, come on up here. Uh, you just really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you. 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 Thank you very much, Alex, for the generous introduction. And our next uh, speaker, our keynote speaker of the day, uh, very much epitomizes uh, what we uh, try to accomplish here with the International Cannabis Business Conference of mixing good business sense as well as uh, political activism and keeping uh, the fight to end cannabis prohibition first and foremost in our minds and our practices. Um, he has authored more than 50 uh, travel guidebooks, uh, self-publishing them at first, uh, growing to uh, produce a TV show uh, as well as a radio show as well. And I encourage everybody, if you're thinking about traveling uh, to Europe, to definitely check out what he has to say, uh, Rick Steves Europe, as well as uh, Travel with Rick Steves is his radio uh, program. And this man has put his money where his mouth is. He has put his uh, celebrity status to good use. He is a board member of the National Normal and he had worked to legalize 
uh, cannabis in Washington. And then when Oregon was on the ballot with Measure 91, uh, this man came down to Oregon, did a six-day, ten-city tour, speaking to packed houses uh, on his own dime, not paid one cent, covered his own expenses, paid it for himself, and he drew crowds uh, that uh, were not the usual su suspects of people in the cannabis industry. Long time uh, cannabis activists would go to his speaking tours and were amazed that they would go there and they would not see other cannabis industry people. It was a whole new crowd of undecided voters, soccer moms, older people. He managed to sway and while I have gotten a lot of credit for my work for Measure 91, I think this man uh, likely is a big reason we got 56% of the votes. So give a warm welcome to uh, travel guru, Rick Steves. Thank you very much. It's my theme song. All right. <clears throat> well, yeah, I had, a, I had an exhilarating time with Anthony and his crew in Oregon just last year, and uh, the same thing two years before that in Washington State with Ellison Holcomb and the I-502 gang. And, uh, you know, we all get the beauty of, uh, of legalizing marijuana. Uh, and I've been at this for nearly 20 years, and I thought I would just share some of my insights um, politically, because all eyes are on California in 2016. And um, I particularly am excited about winning here in a couple of years, as I know you guys are. As Anthony said, I'm a travel writer. And for me, high is a place. That's, I, I wonder why am I into this? Why do I even care? Well, it's a place, and uh, sometimes I want to go there. You know, my, my speakers sound better. <laughs> Suddenly I'm a good cook. <laughs> Conversations slither around the room like stray cats. <laughs> you know, it's just sometimes I want to go there, and a lot of people do. And, uh, you know, our government really can't say we can't go there. I mean, there are cases when our government says we can't go somewhere, and okay, there's a reason. But there's got to be a reason, and there's no reason we can't go to that place called High. And, and I think we're learning that. Now, a lot of people go there, and uh, right now 80,000 people are in jail for, for, for exercising the civil liberty to enjoy marijuana, and uh, we're all about changing that. I really believe that the adult, responsible use of marijuana purely for fun, recreational use, is a civil liberty. And uh, <laughs> now, when, I, when I got out in public and so on, I always make it very clear I am not pro pot. I'm pro the civil liberties to, pro, to smoke and enjoy pot. Pot is a drug. It can be abused, it can be addictive in, in certain cases. Uh, it's not healthy for you, it's not good for kids. Uh, if somebody's not intoxicated on our roads by anything, they should throw the book at it as far as I'm concerned. But that doesn't mess up the basic principle, the basic truth that, you know, the right to smoke marijuana is a civil liberty. Now, that's been my theme in Washington, and that's been my theme in Oregon, along with all of our partners in these initiatives, and we're winning. Now, I've learned you have to present it in a certain way. You know, you, you can't win an election with this crowd here. You guys get it. But there's too many people that don't smoke pot, that never will smoke pot, that need to vote for pot. That's our challenge. So you present it as tax, regulate, and legalize, you see. That makes sense. Uh, uh, I know that the laws that we've passed are disappointing to some, and I respect those who oppose it, but we are all on the same team. And the, 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 the uh, debate is idealism, yeah, God, just the best thing God ever gave us, or pragmatism. People are afraid of those freaks that smoke that stuff. You know, you've got to deal with that political reality if you want to get anywhere. If you'd rather just be idealistic, well, you, you can just ignore what I'm saying there, but I'm not spending all this time and money running around Oregon just to lose. You know, and I hope to come down here and spend some money and time helping out the best I can. But it needs to be something that I'm doing. So, uh, you know, the, the key is to have a public safety law that celebrates civil liberties and to reach those critical voters that people actually get out to the polls, which is not our crowd. You'd like to think it's your crowd, but it's not. You can give everybody at Hemp Fest, you know, all sorts of incentives to vote, and, and they're not going to vote. But the scared people in the suburbs with kids, they're going to vote. 
So that's, that's our that's our political reality. Now, to me, <laughs> this is this is so exciting because we are fighting the prohibition of our age. Yeah. It, this is history will look back at this and they'll think the prohibition against marijuana was just as wrong-minded as the prohibition against alcohol back in the 20s and 30s. And we've got to remember that you overthrow a prohibition that the government, the federal government, is held bent on and keeping one state at a time. You do it with patience and you do it with finesse. When you look at alcohol, at first it was not alcohol is legal, it is beer is okay in New York. And then they got confident with that, this guy didn't fall, and other states would go along, and then, hey, hard liquor, and then believe that, believe it or not, they allow people to home brew. But they still regulate, and it goes from state to state how they sell it, where it can be sold, and there's some counties that are actually still dry. And I think that's the way it needs to go with marijuana. We're fighting the same battle, and what we're up against is like a billion dollars of government propaganda that has wired most American consumers of media's brains to think that marijuana is the evil weed. Now, there's two energies in this sort of cannabis world. There's the people who are uh, seeing this green gold rush, and I think that's exciting, and I, I, I got a sense there's a lot of people going to make a lot of money. And there's people that really are a drug policy reform movement motivated not by starting up a business, but motivated by civil liberties, all right? We are partners in this, and it's so exciting to smell victory. <laughs> it is so exciting to smell victory. And as we know, when California goes, that's really the, clearly going to start an avalanche, and that's going to be the end of our war against marijuana. Now, I inject a European sensibility to this discussion because I've spent a third of my adult life living out of a 9 by 22 by 14 inch carrying on the airplane size suitcase overseas. That's what I do for work. I spend four months a year in Europe. I've done that for the last 30 years. Hanging out the people who find different truths to be self-evident and God-given. And over in Europe, a joint is about as exciting as a can of beer. You just don't block people out in Europe like they do here now. It's hard to paint Europe with broad strokes because every country has their own drug policies. And a few countries in Europe are just as progressive as much as the United States. And other countries are very, very progressive about marijuana. But a common denominator, in, especially in these progressive countries, is something called pragmatic harm reduction. A lot of people into drug policy reform were working on pragmatic harm reduction. It sounds good, pragmatism, reduce harm to your society. That was a catchphrase, and for eight years of the Bush administration, anything dealing with drugs that had that phrase in it, pragmatic harm reduction, was tossed out without any discussion because that was a, 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 just a, a sneaky a, approach to legalizing marijuana. But that's what it is all about in Europe, is helping society. In our society, we measure our, the effectiveness of our drug programs by how many people do we lock up. Now, in Europe, my finish reminded me that a society has to make a choice, tolerate alternative lifestyles or build more prisons. And then they always remind me that we Americans lock up eight times as many people per capita as they do. Either we are inherently more criminal people, or we've got some screwy laws. And you know, you can make your own uh, judgment on that. But uh, I like a society where drug addicts, and there are drug addicts, there are people that are sucked into the, uh, the, the nightmare of hard drug addiction. I like a society that treats those people not as criminals, but as, as people that need help. And that's what Europe does. And America's coming around that uh, revelation. <laughs> well, well,